And we're back for game number two. Newbie versus LGD Forever Young. LFY looked almost unstoppable in that first game. Hard to pinpoint exactly where it all went wrong for Newbie. I highlighted the vision. Lumi, you highlighted maybe prioritizing stronger lanes. It's really tough to know. And the thing is, LFY has been picking a lot of different heroes. So coming into this game, I guess we'll see how do Newbie adapt. For now, it is the Afu Night Stalker ban. So that does what? leave the Earth Spirit. Spirit in the pool. Is there a spirit? No. Nope. And they don't want it. The yeah. other ES. Gonna be a shaker. And, you know, this could be the Afu shaker. In fact, for most teams, it's it's offlane shaker. But for Elf White in particular, they love the roaming shaker a little bit more. As always, it's gonna be the Sanking for Kaka. And most likely the KP Puck. So Newbie not overreacting by any means. In fact, the identical opening for them, except for that Night Stalker ban. So yep. I think their mindset is very much. You know, we have a strong strategy. We just need to take away at least a little bit of what LFY really excels at. Yeah. Or maybe they, they also agree with the whole sentiment of, look, we our draft is fine. We just need to play a bit better. Mm -hmm. A little bit of quick uh, huddle with the coach. Both teams still in good position here in the group overall. They've both played some of the tougher teams in their groups, at least from when I, I checked the the grid it looked like that was the case so i think very likely we do see both in the upper bracket uh, obviously i think elf is a lock for top four at this point newbie not guaranteed but still should be in pretty good shape so we'll likely be seeing a lot more of these teams and this is as much like learning for that main event potential matchup as it is uh, actually trying to win the game here yep we're gonna see the inflame batrider instead so no more. Although I want to say that profit was so impressive. Like he didn't do anything fancy per se. He was just always at the right place. Bought the early drums. Maybe it'll be uh, an off foo, Matt Ryder. You know, maybe. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. I think that's an EG special. I think most teams have experimented with the Bat Rider support. It's just that. He kind of just dips in the first eight to 10 minutes of the game. Uh, and that's where you want your four position to be running all over the place and, and you know, getting kills. So the, the timing's a little bit awkward for a support bat rider, whereas a roaming shaker is very likely. Five seconds remaining. Death Prophet now removed for newbie. Interesting ban from them, maybe setting up for their mid. Curious to see who that will be. LFY actually the ones to remove the Weaver this time. It would be Newbie's pick first coming out of the stage. So mainly afraid Newbie will just grab it right away before they can get their hands on it. Yeah, even though they have the Batrider, certain teams don't like the Batrider into the Weaver matchup. First of all, if it's, it ends up as a 1v1 matchup, the Bat is going to have a tough time. Secondly is that during the mid game, Lincoln Sphere is such a good counter to the Batrider. And third, even if they don't have Lincolns, you have to be right on top of the Weaver as you blink in. Sometimes you, I mean, the Flaming Lasso cast range is so small. It's, it's just not a, a good, reliable counter that you want it to be against the Weaver. So Batrider teams to, do tend to take out the Weaver. So for Elf Y, we saw a change up with the Super Dusa. Still, I think always his Dragonite and Pugnaut are the more likely picks. Yep. But not sure. As for newbie, we're just interested to know where the the direction of the second phase goes. Do they make a change? Do they stick with their old comfortable, reliable picks? I personally felt like the the Chaos Knight was not very impressive that game. I'd say out of the picks they went for, that's the one I would shy away from this time. Sure. Uh, they didn't were... get much done in the lanes, didn't farm that well. Could also be hard countered by the Dusa, which is still available. I think that's the one here you don't go back for. Or if you do, only a fifth pick. I think especially against a Shaker that has so much AoE disable, I, I think the Chaos Knight might be a bit weak. Um, I believe they kick, picked a Witch Doctor in this spot. And it looks like we're going to switch gears a little bit. Oh, the, the Batrider counter. Yep. Also doubles up as a, a takeaway from the team, right? Because Silencer and Batrider play so well together. Revealing the silencer so early, though, does give LFY the opportunity to pick heroes that first don't care about getting global, and second could itemize against global. So think of heroes that could get early BKBs or Manta styles and whatnot. 
So LFY were lacking in the objective Dota department, but they shore that up now. They grab the Shaman. They still have probably one more yeah. key core in that regard to go. And the Shaman also pressures Puck super hard. Last game, we saw what a Rubik could have done every time the orb was on cooldown. And now, like, he could just come out of trees and shackle that Puck, and Puck could just die, so... Puck my KP my shy away from from the offlane puck. So newbie going to the life stealer. It's obviously fantastic against Batrider in the laning stage. Uh, mm -hmm. Also a great two great vehicles for him, and the infest bomb with global is a potent opening and a way to start the fights. So yep. I do think the life stealer is a lot of good synergy. Also even against Earthshaker Shaman can be good uh, if you're able to jump on them, as the rage counters everything they offer. Strong pick. Yeah. Back to Elf. Why? I, I think if you see the Life Slayer, I don't think you go Pugna anymore, right? For Super, it's just a bit of a dead weight. Decrepify is okay, but I think Sand King Puck with the Infest Bomb is a lot of damage already. And then if they just global, like, yeah. you're not going to be able to do anything defensively. All right. I like Dragon Knight better as far as, like, the traditional superheroes go. Oh, so they're going to mix it up. They grab Clanks. the Clanks. This could be Monet's hero. Likely to be Monet's hero. Leaving Super is probably for the last pick, and so too as Triple C's. We're going to see a very different pacing uh, in this game compared to the last. Last game, we had a very slow start. Um, I, I think this game, both teams are looking to fight in the mid-game. So around 15, 20 minutes of the, in the game, both teams are going at it with their mid-game cores. Of course, the, the final pick of the mid-heroes would, would shape really how the game will go. I'm liking the DK more and more for LFY. I mean, look at the push. Shaman wards, clinks, Dragonite in the front. It's a, it's a tough one to fight into. And then you have, uh, you know, two good early game BKB buyers in the form of Klings and Dragonite to wear off the global. Yeah, I think that's really a key point. You want to have heroes that naturally want to build items which counter the global. Right. Uh, or who just don't care about it by their nature. So BKB buyers are great. Someone who can like rush a Manta early is obviously decent as a solution. Uh, also good against the Puck. Maybe are pretty reliant on those silences with these two. Is there a chance of a core <laughs> silencer, Lumi? We didn't actually discuss it. Uh, I'm kind of assuming it's a support, but we have seen a few teams try that silencer mid. Yes, there is. A, like, for example, let's say if LFY picks a storm here, because the newbie has the ultimate final pick in the whole draft, right? If you pick something that gets wrecked by the silencer in the mid lane, then newbie has the opportunity to, to shift gears. SC does play a good mid silencer, but it's going to be a Dragon Knight. Super standard for super. I, I mean, you can't argue with this. The armor is great against Lifestealer who is very reliant on the physical damage. Uh, he's tanky enough by his nature that he's unlikely to be burst during global unless newbies start to get ahead. Uh, and he gives you that frontliner that they were lacking to hit towers. Now, like you mentioned, that nightmare becomes a reality where the Shaman can drop the wards, the Klinx is railing away at the tower under Strafe, and Dragonite is the frontline tanker soaking up damage and always a threat to initiate. Batrider scouting around the trees for the opening. It's a scary siege lineup. If LFY get rolling, newbie are going to be hard pressed to stop them. Okay. Bloodseeker. Mid Bloodseeker. All right. How about that? Does that change the complexion of so all why, we've been seeing? Why Bloodseeker? Why not? <laughs> like, what does Bloodseeker offer? It, is it for the laning? Is is there a particular hero being Blood Rage that's really beneficial? Is it for the Blood Rage Silence? First of all, I think the Blood Seeker allows you to fight really early into the game, which is the timing that Alpha Y is going to be fighting you into. So you're not going to be you're, you're not going to be weak in the stage that Alpha Y is going to bring the fight to you. Secondly, it combines very nicely with the Puck Dream Coil. The Blood Right, not, not only is it a good defensive spell in terms of counteracting against the push, Offensively, very, very powerful before the BKB comes up. We might even see one of th this might be one of those games where we see the first item BKB on the Dragonite and Clinks. Like it's so important. You I know? think the the big thing that 
I worry about a bit with the Bloodseeker is there's just so much disable. Like, this hero really wants to be able to run around a lot in fights, and uh -huh. they have insane control. So that gives me Yeah, but pause. you also have three silences to back up, right? That's true. You, you don't start the game with BKB. So, like, imagine he globals, the rupture comes out, and what does what does Elf Y do before those BKB? Nothing. They just die. So I, I could definitely see this Bloodseeker kind of snowball out of control. So you yeah, so I think that's really what you're what you're touching on is the key point. This is not an a la carte bloodseeker that you're picking because he's good on his own. You're picking him because he's good with their heroes if they combo it properly. Yep. Uh, so we have to look towards how newbie execute in team fights and how much synergy they're able to demonstrate on the field of battle. I wonder how much that uh, the Bloodseeker can pressure a Dragonite. Because I one, one thing that you can do is, like, you get off a lot of pot shots against a fellow me melee core hey, on the mid lane. And if you could get them low enough, even through the, the, the Dragonite region, you could gain a movement speed advantage on him to get even uh, more hits in. Uh oh, and Flame's going to get found in the trees. He has a Firefly here. It's being pressure, though, with the open ones coming through, he's pretty far away from home. But the Firefly will continue forced wow, on his heels. he even wants the rune. Oh, he goes He's... for the rune. That might just be his downfall in flame. Oh, ballsy. But Faith is there to cut him off as he decides which way do I go. Tries to juke over the cliff. I think he makes it out. Two, Two more hits. auto attacks would do it. Is and that worth away, the bounty? I mean, that's that's a salve's worth of damage he just took. I guess you took it away from the life sealer. Yeah. Uh, he goes all the way to base. It's yeah, not it's okay. It's not great. He may, also, he may have thought he was just going to die, so at least take the bounty run with him. <laughs> it's like, oh wait, I can actually live here. So yeah, how is this mid matchup going to go? Bloodseeker has the superior base damage, but you have to deal with Breathe Fire. DK has the plus armor to help mitigate the right-click damage, which is mainly what Bloodseeker offers. Mm -hmm. um, you can zone him back a little bit with Blood Rite spam, but it's a fairly expensive spell to be spamming. So if he wants to do that, I'll probably have to get a bottle. So. I don't know. I'm curious to see if there is a clear winner. Generally, DK just doesn't lose his lane. So yep. if he does, this would be a rare first. It also comes down to how much of how, how the other lanes are going, right? Let's not forget about Thirst. If, let's say, Newbie are winning the other lanes and all of a sudden SC gets constantly 20 extra MS, 20 extra damage, then the map really changes. And he is getting the Deny Edge here. Super not doing so well. Yeah, like, just look at, look at the Spike Dragon. Well, he doesn't have it yet, but... He'll have it now, but despite of that, I think SC is going to be able to pressure him very hard. Yeah, seems like the Bloodseeker has the edge so far. Obviously, the more Breathe Fire levels up, and once you get your bottle, you can just kind of spam that to CS, and in doing so, also limit the pressure. The Bloodseeker can offer nice little assist there as Triple C, dual laning with Super, and help him get some last hits. Yeah, top lane. LFY do have a tri lane, and the Fissure comes through one more Siri Narrow, would get the job done, and LFY draw the first blood. So while that mid lane is going well, and a lot of eyes are attending there, LFY getting on the board elsewhere. They're still down in gold even after that, though. Light Stealer doing very well in the bottom lane. As you see in flame, just already back to the jungle. With the Arcane Rune, he's actually going to try and farm some creeps early. All right. Stack that Napalm much faster. There you go. E-Fish. S-Triple-C is dominating. Yeah. Which is, you know, pretty rare to say that against Super DK, right? Because he's so good against most traditional, like, Queen of Pain or Pug. But this is... I, I, I thought... I thought... Bloodseeker wins as a matchup, but I didn't think he'll win it that hard. I, I don't know. I kind of thought l would give him a little help, but it seems like they just want to focus on this top lane. Uh -oh. As DDC is being pressured back, KP forcing him on his heels, the Curse of the Silence. SC could run up low. here and just kick, just take a kill. slowly planked down, but he's not bothering. Figures his team has it. Oh. DDC oh. Oh, almost denied by the Roche. That would have been yeah. a real face paw moment for Newbie had the Roche gotten the last hit. Still, at least it's a support, you know. The Klinks is happily trying to farm away. No, but that said, he's not CSing that well. Only 12 so far. Generally, as Klinks, with his really long windup, it's kind of hard to last hit those first few levels. But once yep. your Syrian arrows get high enough, it gets easier. A big reason why SC is winning this mid matchup so hard is that he's been able to deny the range creep. Um, super 
pretty much every time he breathes fire, let's say for a melee creep CS, it brings a rain creep low enough, and then SC just denies it. I don't think he's even got a single rain creep in about four minutes of gameplay. He is down almost a full level in a true 1v1. Yep, that's the range. Bottom for you, lane, man. meanwhile, in flame. Yep, Go dies ahead. in flames. As Mookie runs him down solo. Big pick off there. Sanubi crushing their two solo lanes. And up on kills, now two to one. I think you could say at least breaking even, if not winning this top lane, yep. because they are denying the clinks this farm. So it's a great start for newbie. Lumi, you wanted stronger lanes. You're getting them right now as a newbie fan. Uh, oh, well, for those, who, for those who are newbie fans. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't peg me as a newbie fan. Top lane. <laughs> Although I do like them quite What's a bit. What's wrong with newbie? Nothing. Jeez, why are you hating on newbie, Josh? Level 6 on SC. I do wonder where he goes to gank. You do see that Super is prepared for a rupture. He has a, a teleport scroll being sent out right now. But... Yeah, I think how, how will the Bloodseeker play this? Is this going to be a QO style Bloodseeker? Do we see that early Radiance? Do we see him constantly going for rupture ganks? Is he mostly trying to give his team more damage? Is he the frontline tank? I guess time will tell exactly how. Yep. His Bloodseeker may differ from other players. I think an early BKB is always warranted uh, because, like you said, there are so many stuns available to disable him. BKB Radiance is the, the QO way. Mugi trying to get on Inflame here. Bottom, if he can get the vision for the open wounds, this will be a kill. Meanwhile, it looks like LFY starting off with, with the Fissure up top. It did not get off the block as Afu intended. There's some definitely some misfires here for LFY. Maybe have been able to punish so far. The rupture is ready, and they let it go right now on Super. Does have the TP scroll, but just keeps on running back to the base. <laughs> that pure damage is just destroying him. He gets the stun up under the tower, but the burrow connects, and Bloodseeker commits no TP support in sight. They're busy trying to counterplay and punish top, and they will do so. Fissuring off Faith, catching him in the shackles. KP can do naught but watch. So it is a one-for-one one around the map. A Dragon Knight for a support silencer. Yeah, but you got Faith. Like, who cares? The five position support. Yeah. And you lost your Dragonite. Agreed. Sorry, that sounded very condescending towards Faith. Uh, he is a TI champion. One of the older TI champions, in fact. Any lane adjustments, Lumi? Like, are you surprised? I think too late to adjust. Oh, super. Super, super is going bottom, but, like, you know, he's so under level at this point that, like, Mookie says, okay. No yeah. one's laning me. Yeah, welcome That's to bottom lane, dude. That's Triple C has his own lane now. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to mo rotate on top instead. A hasted Batrider, only level four coming in. They're going to try to kill off Fla Faith again, and it looks like they should be able to do so. Yep. Slowly cooking him. But yeah, just nobody wants to lane mid now. Batrider doesn't want to go there. Super certainly sure as hell does not. Yep. He has hit level six now, so he'll use his ult early. Already the tower's been whittled down to below 500 health. And the other thing is, because the Dragonite's been forced off the lane, his big early benefit is, no matter what happens, he usually pushes the tower, but mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to be doing that bottom. No, he's not. He's not even seen a tower yet. Perhaps? Newbie have the Dragonite figured out. And this is giving other teams some ideas to how to beat the LFY. That's perhaps an even more dangerous aspect for LFY moving forward in the tournament. The CS discrepancy is absurd. 36 denies on the Bloodseeker, 58 last hits. Yep. He does have a... Uh, Almost three times the Dragonite's last hits, and then 36 <laughs> times his denies. Oh, Easy. Man. Math. Uh, Bloodseeker going for the Blame Mill. Obviously super good against, uh, you know, the Clinks. That's a 3,600% advantage. Let me... Tell me more. <laughs> you 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 were a math teacher once, right? I, I studied to be a math teacher. And then Dota happened. <laughs> Thank God it did. Alright, newbie smoked up top. Am I gonna commit the gank? Oh, I see. He's just looking for anything to rupture. Rupture here? I don't think he wants to see. Okay, there's a rupture. A little bit late. He's gotten to the tower already. Burrow Strike's gonna come through. Afu wants the Fissure in hell, but not really going to do much. Oh, the Fissure misses! And then because of that, Kaka will survive. I don't think they have detection for him. It's a level 1 Sandstorm, but nowadays <laughs> that means you're waiting a long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, he's going to walk it off. 
Kaka just easily able to scurry back. Gets away to safety. The lanes have really not broken the way LFY hoped for. So I guess you turn towards their mid game. Do they have the tools they need to come back? What are some of the key points on how LFY can stay relevant in this game? I think if you're uh, in flame, you'd think about even skipping your drums as he ports out from the bottom. The drums, I think the lays the blink dagger so much that you just need the blink to actually fight your way back. Um, Dragon Knight is not exactly a comeback hero. He relies on having a good lane stage. Top lane, looks like we're going to see a gank on Monet. Rupture comes out. He doesn't have a TP. Not that he could TP out anyways. He's going to go down. And then you need to start rotating this clink to participate in these kind of small ganks and get tier 1 towers behind it. That's always the clink's game plan. So there's a lot that LFY can do. It, it comes down to, you know, get, getting the right play set up. They're committing another smoke as they rotate towards top. It's been so much pressure on this top lane. The Fissure connects, will bring down Kaka, but they want more. I don't think they realize that Super's coming in could be a huge opportunity. If they kill S Triple C here, all that great start that he had is quickly turned awry. And now with the Hex coming through, he's quite tanky, but still killable. Drops the blood right. A couple more Searing Arrows should do the trick. They bring S Triple C down. Perfect. A bounty claimed for LFY. And just like that, they claw their way back in the game. All right, and likely they're going to at least get some sort of damage on this tier one. Yeah, that's the great thing about this rotation, right? Is the in theory, they should be able to really hit the tower quite hard between Searing Arrows. Uh, as I say that, I think they're afraid, <laughs> yeah. though, because Newbie could be committing with the Bloodseeker respawn. Right. Also, Silencer is global now, and I think seeing that Elf are like, yeah, we don't really want to risk that siege. Yep. And they are able to do all of that without the Batrider, which gives them, you know, room and space to farm in the jungle. It looks like he's going to go for the standard uh, drums build, just so that they could be more mobile and uh, quick in these teamfights. Getting a movement speed advantage against the Bloodseeker lineup is very key. Obviously, when you rupture, you don't care about movement speed. Back in the mid lane, Fissure and a kill. Monet. This is what he needs to do across the map. Get a kill, hit the buildings. And they do have great reliable setup as the game moves along for that to enable that clinks. Long range disable in the fissure, the blink lasso, maybe a blink dragon tail or shadow blade dragon tail. Lots of ways that LFY can set kills up for the clinks to snag. Something that was a little lacky when Secret ran the clinks, like they had the charge initiation. That was really the main way of starting those fights, but it's not reliable. Yep, rupture happening on the mid lane. He's gonna try to TP out immediately. Where is the stun? Miscommunication. Faith ported it in before Kaka did. That should have been the other way for sure. Yeah, because, you know, Faith essentially don't contribute much to a gank. He could global from anywhere. Moogie being tracked here bottom, but they're going to swing towards the d Radiant Jungle instead. Where Faith is lurking. Still that global ready. The persistence pays off here. Newbie are able to grab a tower takedown as they hunt for Faith, but... TP out immediately. Kaka not going to be in range in time. Alfoy doing a good job at picking their fights here as the laning stage breaks down. They're not forcing the issue too much. They're respecting the global. They're going only for safe kills. Yep. Nubia are really going to have to work to find that big team fight to crack this game wide open. It will come soon. Uh, if you look at the puck, he is sitting at 1,700 gold. Just need a minute or so. Once he has the, the coil... Blink Coil Global, I, I don't think Alphi has much uh, answer. And now Lifeslayer gets dragged down. Monet, not enough damage output to plank him down. Global is going to come out. Are they going to return and fight or is it going to be escape? Looks like they're going to try to run. Waiting for that Fissure opportunity. Lifestealer heading to the north will be corralled, focused down. And they blew the Global too. As you mentioned, no Bloodseeker in this fight. Puck was late to the party as well. So Newbie starting to look a little uncoordinated here. Getting punished for it. Yep. This is kind of the, the dip in the Bloodseeker power level, is that he's working on his first major items. His ganks are, unfortunately for him, not connecting. Yeah, the days of, you know, Bloodseeker running around killing heroes solo are, you know, long gone. Everyone carries TPs now. It's got to be a team effort. Yep. And as we mentioned, he's really most useful with that coil blood right combo heading towards the mid game, something we haven't seen yet, Lumi. Yeah. I mean, right now, he could definitely get kills just with a single Burrow Strike. It looks like we're going to support it and start a fight. Coil does break and Rupture coming in soon. TP out. Where's the Burrow Strike? Kaka not getting in. Well, he got there, but he's dead. In Flame, is he going to port out as well? And with Kaka dead, there is no way to break that. 
where's the stuns? They just don't have them. Coil committed, Sand King dead. And while that's happening, the Radiant Courier gets blown up. DDC drops the ward in the mid lane, applies some pressure there. And now Monet joins in. They will lose a tier one tower as well. Newbie had the good first five to eight minutes. But well, LFY have yeah. the shot calling right now. The positioning is on point. The TPs have been timely. Newbie seem very reliant on their Sand King and Kaka. The struggles continue, Lumi. This is probably the third Sand King game in a row that we've cast of him where he hasn't had a great start. While the rest of the team is doing well, he's still struggling to get that fast blink dagger. It just doesn't seem like he's the impact force on SK that he used to be. Or at least other teams have figured out how to slow him down. Yeah, I think a combination of that is pairing him with a puck as well. Because normally, you know, if if KP doesn't necessarily have to rush a blink, KP could give up a little bit of his farm to Kaka. But, you know, obviously Puck needs his blink. And then Sanking also needs the blink. There's just not enough farm to go around between these players. Because you're not going to take anything away from the Life Sealer or, or the Blood Seeker, that's for sure. Newbie are going to smoke. They have the globe already. The Puck and the Blood Seeker join forces. But the direction they're heading, not sure they'll find any LFY heroes. Scan clears the high ground and they move in. KP leading the charge. While it's happening, there's a gank in the top lane. Looks like that Sanki might go down again. Shackled up, DDC, then the lasso. All the chains binding Kaka. Yep. And turning him again into dust. Another death, and that blink feels like a forlorn dream right now. Oh, they're gonna come in and at least pick up one or two kills. They see Inflame. Flame just blinks out. DDC ports. There's no way to cancel that coil. Everybody's gonna be safe. KP misses the coil altogether. An absolute disaster. And Nubi are wasting time here. You know, Mookie's yeah. not farming. Bloodseeker was a part of that smoke for the first half or so. Did At least they didn't yeah. blow the global. So they can try again in relatively short amount of time. But meanwhile, LFY, they took that bottom tower. They've taken the mid tower. They're, they've equalized things in terms of map control quite nicely. They've really stabilized this game yeah. after a rough start. I mean, Dragon Knight is still having a tough game. You know, he's still 1,500 net worth behind the Blood Seeker, but for the most part, he's he's caught up. You know, a big part of the reason why they couldn't actually get off a good gank LD is that when they started that smoke gank, there was absolutely no vision on the other side of the map. You see the wards in the radi or in the dire jungle. It's they dropped that during the smoke. Um, had they had the vision there before, they knew that they don't, they shouldn't have gone that direction. There was nobody there. So another game where vision is having a huge impact in this early game. Another issue I do oh, think. You, they just smoked on top of Ward right here, newbie. Again, the vision game. Uh uh. Yeah. Another issue that I do see. Oh, uh, hold that thought. We might have a big fight brewing, newbie. Moving into position, smoking again. They have the ward. They'd like to get the jump on Inflame, and this time they strike Paydirt. They will coil him up, munch him with the life stealer. Mugi secures the kill for the team, but they're not that good at transitioning into objectives. That is a big weakness of their draft. The blade mail build on a blood seeker. He doesn't hit all that hard. He's much more of a hero killer, life stealer. You know, no signs of an early desolator. The armlet's okay, yeah. uh, and they will take this tier one mid. But like going for a bigger objective like a full HP tower or a Roshan, that's not something they can do. LFY on the other hand, one kill, they drop the ward, the Klinks has his death, so now, and they're just straight into the pit, or they're straight onto the tier two. Yeah, it feels like the Life Slayer needs to pick up a death slayer of his own to supplement the, the pushing. Um, but even with that, I think Newbie is more about, hey, we kill you, and then you don't have any heroes to defend the tower, we'll just run down to well, Swing and a miss for Afu. Tried to Echo Slam, cancel that TP, but... Not quite able to do it in time. Looks like he's a bit out of range, so. Good escape there. LFY whiffing. But still, overall, I think the game has definitely gotten a lot more relaxed with him. Bottom lane, though, Super. Again, the TPs. This time, Kaka is ready. And this time, Super will be punished. The Dragon's wings are clipped. A newbie secure a desperately needed kill. Yep. That's the gank that they need to keep on doing. Uh, Kaka plus SC. Look at the damage Monet is pumping out. Almost able to just solo kill Faith. That is the worry for Silencer. Is this hero tends to be under farmed and very squishy as a support. And if Monet ever isolates him, he just dies before the fight begins or he wastes the global, you know, at a suboptimal time. Yeah, Faith is trying to itemize against that. He is going for the Ghost Scepter. 
Likely there are going to be Diffusal Blades to, to pick up to, to counter that, but one step at a time. Newbie, close to that Blink Dagger for Kaka, finally. About 300 gold away. So that was a big part of that kill. Uh, it looks like Newbie are going to gear up more to take this a bit later, as KP is transitioning into a Midas right now. Uh, Bloodseeker farming towards his BKB. Sanj and Yasha, the pickup for Mugi. So, like, some items that will let them fight now, but they are looking for a little insurance should it drag on. Yeah, historically, when you look at heroes like Life Slayer, Bloodseeker, and Puck, you might think that they don't scale that well in the late game, but I think the talents really help out. Bloodseeker in particular, if you ever get to 25, uh, man, that minus seven second cooldown Blood Riot is... I gotta stop talking about Kaka. Oh, I actually did buy the blink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, man, I think it's gonna be good, but... Blink secured, so the pain is suffering is over once this respawn come kicks in. I think this the mid game is gonna but, be. But yeah, you were saying like they they have a power spike late game. Yeah, like uh, ultra late game. They they like four, obviously everyone knows about the four twenty on puck, the, the dank gold per minute that yeah. puck could get. Uh, which blood secret do you like the the blood right cooldown or the life steal one better? Um, they're both quite good, but I think the blood right cooldown is the one that most people select more frequently. It becomes impossible to actually push in the high ground. DDC. Gonna get picked off here by the, the roaming gang squad. Now they're still trying to pressure bottom, it looks like. Monet in position with that Dessa almost finished off the tower, and that is one thing that has been difficult for newbie is these towers starting to fall, but now Batrider caught out with the rupture. Blood right coming through, and it should be a solid bat kill follow-up. So two down. LFY needs to get out of here. New BR on the chase. Buybacks available for the Bat Rider if he wants to rejoin the fight as Klinks runs in deep. He's behind enemy lines. They go for the slam. The jam is not there, but the auto attacks are coming in and they still get the kill. The global's been blown. Gets nothing done. And now Newbie on the run as Triple C in danger. If a Dragon Tail comes to the be bad. But Kaka strikes back with the Epi. Not enough for a kill just yet. Super stays alive. The wards get popped out. The Fissure again. Oh, boo, are you kidding me? Makes it three. They might get four. Shaker saves the day, and Afu takes a big old dunk on top of Nubi. KP tries to salvage Ooh. it, jumps right back in, gets one kill. Still sticking around, wants to use that Midas, if nothing else. There's not enough mana for him to do anything. Probably blink forward, Midas the range creep and the orb back. And I mean, he's... he'd love a kill. I don't think he has the mana to yeah. much, but he's got the coil soon. Yeah, he's just going to back away. So in that engagement, to me, it was hard for Faith, but he needed to global right after the Echo before the Fissure came out. We're going to watch it one more time. Afu pops it off, and the global came just a tad too late. And because of that, because of the Fissure hitting, enough damage was dealt. Uh, Klings just came in from the, from the side. Epicenter, this is where you say, Afu, look, you're only level 11, that level 1 ultimate. Had he had a level 2 ultimate, I think that fight changes completely. I think the DK will die. I think Monet will probably die as well. And so much of that goes back to all of the early deaths. And right, the right. slow start Kaka's had is early game has be almost become a liability, which is crazy to talk about. When you look at Kaka, I think he had like six months where he was consistently like, uh, you know, playing as well as Afu has been this tournament, you know, dominating the landing stage, creating a lot of space for the team. But for whatever reason, this, at least in the games that we've cast him, that just hasn't been the story. I think it's one of those things where you play a, one hero so so many times that the opposition just gets so many like data on you. Like they know your gank patterns, they know your your moves, where you ward, and things like that. And it just feels like he's been figured out. Now I don't want to say he's a one-trick pony. Kaka has a bunch of heroes, but his team has time and time again selected him sanking first pick always. And they do it early too. Yeah. So your opponents definitely know it's coming. Meanwhile, looking at item progression as the game will slow down a bit. BKB nearly complete on the clink. The tier two will fall bottom, denied by Kaka, but still more map control forfeited for the newbie squad. Other than that, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Our Dragon Knight now working towards, in fact, just completed his BKB. We already saw the Shaker blink, Yule's on the way, blink up on the Shaman. So lots of extra mobility, some very strong combat items coming out to the side of LFY. For the side of newbie, they just got that Midas, they got a Yasha on the Bloodseeker. 
We already saw the Kaka blink, and that's really about it. So yep. don't feel like they're hitting the same power spike. Newbie has maybe one more fight left in them before they can't fight anymore. Then they have to just switch gears and go turtle up because these BKBs are coming out. We already talked about how strong the LFY BKB is going to be against Faith, against this Puck, against the Sanking. There is no way that Newbie could win a team fight should double or triple BKBs come out. This is their last smoke gank before... Before they want to split push, before they want to like slow exactly. the game down. Just let turtle the, up. Let the Puck Midas kick in, you yeah. know, let the Bloodseeker spend some time farming. But here comes the Clash. Zankin Illusion coming in quickly, dealt with by a Hex. There is a completed Solar Crest as well, something great to throw on the Dragon Knight. Bat Rider going for that pretty early. Why creeping in. Newbie trying to back away. And Flame hunting. All about this Roche. I wonder wh whether Alpha I recognize that they are much stronger right now. Obviously, they don't have all the visions that we do and see, you know, item timing and stuff like that. Had they just walked into the pit and just claimed Roche, it's very likely that they would have gone. It's scary, right? Like, Newbie's zone control and ability to take fights around the pit is pretty unparalleled. With You just global into that big blood right silence epicenter combo. They could BKB everything, though. That's the thing. The, the only thing they can BKB is the rupture. That's true. I guess it's more of like, LFY has two BKB. The rest of the team is still quite affected mm -hmm. by the global. LFY, though, now this time, they are the one that's selecting a gank. Oh, KP Puck. would be a huge takedown. He Rex blinks it. back. He did break it. Still though, caught in the middle of it is the Silencer. Down immediately, Faith is dead, no buyback available. War trap. And the War Trap follow up, they get S Triple C as well. LFY strike while the iron is hot. And they draw blood again. Now the Roche should be an easy grab. I guess this is why they're 11 0 team. You know, had the rough early game, remember? Where 15 minutes ago it was. This is the scenario we pointed out. Nobody could even go mid to lane against the Bloodseeker. Afu is waiting. Crouching in the trees. Echo available. A wayward puck runs in and dies. And then the global uh, comes out. Uh-oh. Kaka wanted to try and jump into the pit with Epicenter, uh, but the timing's not right from Faith. And now the jig is up. There's a ward here, and as Kaka tries to get rid of it, he's going to find himself uh, on the run. Afu blinking in. Nails them with the Fissure. Could go for the full Echo commitment. Faith again served up on a silver platter. Snack turns into meal, and LFY not only get the Roche, but some free kills as well. Newbie are in utter disarray now. I feel like Afu has a, a ravage on a 15 second cooldown. Pretty much. Like, he, the way that he's been playing, you, you know, we saw that highlight on the bottom where he's been hitting two to three every single time with his Fissure. Yeah, Just it's then here again. It's not like, oh yeah, like, you know, five man echo slam, you know, with an ice blast follow up. It's just really well placed and timed fissures that hit yep. three heroes instead of one or two that interrupt combos that, you know, are just timed right and positioned right to win them fights. Like, a lot of shakers are, you know, shakers more flashy with the echo, but I think the fissures have been far more important this game. Yep. We just saw a comparison of the four position player, and I think this matchup between the two teams is entirely based on uh, what we just saw in other screens. The stats are relatively similar, but a lot of the small things, I think Afu is just doing better. And this is not to discredit. Kaka is one of the best four position players in China. It's just lately he has just not been on point. I think. He just isn't playing his best Dota right now. Yeah. It's hard to know why. It's not even to necessarily say that it's his fault individually, but for whatever reason, like he's just not that impact force that Afu is right now. And, I think it shows you that newbie really do rely on that. Like mm -hmm. mid lane went great. S triple C at a good time. Uh, granted, Faith's globals have been pretty suspect. It's hard for Faith to have good global because the burst damage is coming out so quickly. Like you have milliseconds to react. They find him. Fissure is going to connect the stun. They got Hex. They got the Shackle. And KP is now dying too much. That's two times they're always been picked off. You something you can ill afford, and even with the might, is still trailing the Batrider net worth. It just it feels like Newbie is just starting to crack under the pressure. The LFY have such good pickoff potential. They're constantly roving around with the Clink scouting, the Batrider looking for jumps. Now he's got a gem, so again, the vision game comes into play. And again, just like last game, LFY have vision supremacy. There is basically nothing out of Newbie's heroes to offer that vision. And this is simply 
doing it through wards, right? You don't have a, you know, I mean, I guess you have a bat rider. The bat rider is yeah. like good for getting the wards up and dewarding. Obviously, yeah. his personal vision is quite limited nowadays, but yeah. Super striking at the buildings again. Not even committing the dragon form. Meanwhile, Clink's doing the same at the mid lane. And all Newbie could do is just watch. Just raining down pain on these <laughs> those red arrows. Just a constant stream of damage. Output. And then you see the follow up to this. It's the wards getting plopped down outside the base. It's the Dragon Knight building his Albert to disarm the Life Stealer, the Blood Seeker in this upcoming fight. Really negate their output. Monet steps up. He's confident with an Aegis. By the way, they still have 10 second BKBs. They haven't even needed to use their BKBs yet. Now he eats a rupture. He's going to take it all on the front line. Global comes out as well. Super activates the BKB. Will die to the physical damage. Oh, Three man coil. Combo. But no follow up. <laughs> like, okay. That got me excited. They and got then... they got heroes that are, should be killable, right? Like, they got the Batrider. They got the. No, they threw everything. The, the shaman, they threw everything they on Dragonite. Have, but they didn't have the epicenter. They didn't yeah. have the rupture. Which is fine, I think, for newbie, right? You got a 10 second BKB out of it. You, you repel the push, you kill the Serpent Wards. Yeah, the tier 3 suffer like half his HP in terms of damage, but I think for newbie, that's as good as it gets. The thing is, LFY still oh, has Aegis for a minute. Oh, they're gonna find him again. KP third time in a row. He's been picked off on his own. It's oh, that it's the vision ward. game. He stood here, right right on his newbie logo, and then there's a ward seeing him. Afu says, okay, I'm gonna fissure you from Fog, and then they just lasso him, hex him, and that's it. Dead for 30. Dragonite up in 15. The Age is still online for about a minute. This is prime time to take the tower. Though they will be lacking those Shaman Wards. Monet should at least get the tier 3. That's going to open the way to the shrines. Not sure he gets the racks unless they really want to risk it. They are going to dust up here. Try to scare him away. There goes the Fissure. Afu does have Echo in his back pocket. But he doesn't want to commit for it. While, Meanwhile, Mon Mugi just TP'd away from the shrine. Super may have scouted him. Any over that way, but not gonna find. Now, if I will back up right now, I think for them they are okay waiting for the next kind of array of items that they want. Finishing up a four staff on Shaman will be good. As far as newbie goes, how do you see them transitioning from this point forward? Like, that combo that we talked about is largely countered by the BKBs, right? Yeah, well, so, it, it, if it doesn't activate the BKB, right? Because Sand King is going to come in with Burrow Strike right on top of the Dragon Knight. And I don't think Super, as great of a player he is, he could kind of... Afu is a Yules, though. So he can just Yules himself and then remove the global, come in and interrupt it anyway. I mean, we saw how quickly that Dragon Knight went down, yeah. despite his, you know, 2800 HP. They are going to dump everything on him. And you, and you still think they like absolutely need the DK to win a fight? I think when you lose your DK like that, Alpha is going to just back off. Rupture on Monet. He BKB, shrugs it off. Almost brings down Kaka. One auto attack shy of the kill. Still standing there. The Rupture wearing off about a quarter left. Now they're going to coil. Commitment again. The global comes through. Time very nicely. Revving up the epicenter. They get to work. They bring down that pesky Bone Fletcher. But the trade is super. Is left unchecked. Ah, the coming in. Slows them down. Now the lasso through. Locking down Mugi. Trying to finish off the laser. But he's so damn tanky. It's taking forever. A silence mid enchant totem. The echo still available. Afu keeps it in reserve. They blow everything. They get the clanks. They cost them two and the global. And now the puck as well. A one for three exchange. And that was without the Echo Slam, which yep. is still ready. I think what we saw there is just the numerical advantage that LFY is having. Like, it was a good initiation from Newbie. It's just that more items, more HP from LFY. And they just kind of tanked through all of it. Afu's in. Doing some heavy hitting here with the totem. No epicenter, no coil, no global, no Bloodseeker BKB, and now no melee racks top. LFY draw first blood in terms of structures. Mm -hmm. They are closing in on that 12 0 start in the groups, looking just like such a complete team. They're winning from behind, they're winning from ahead, they're, they've shown a bunch of different picks and styles for a variety of their heroes and I mean it's just hard not to to run out of good things to say about this team with the way they're playing. Yeah, when a team has winning has been winning every match. There, there's a lot of a lot of good things. Let's talk about the Bloodseeker as a whole because 
We saw what he was able to do in the laning stage. He dominated the DK. You know, a hero that you said has always done really well in the lane stage. Since the breathe fire change. Right, and then he, you know, just kind of fell off. I think largely... Like, who's had more impact? I would definitely say Dragonite has had more impact right. on this game. And, and that's because of the item build that he went for. When you go for things like Blade Mail, Yasha into BKB, you need to supplement that with a bunch of kills. Remember, there were a whole bunch of times where he ruptured, Faith ported in instead of Kaka, or they had the port in a different timing. They missed a couple kills like that. You can't miss kills with Bless Seeker. KP tries to counter initiate here. They get the burrow off on the Batrider. How much do they want to commit on him? He does have an Aghanim Scepter. He could go for those two hero lasso and try to hold them back. S Triple C dropping the rupture and they turn their attention to the Bat who's lost. Oh, it's already done. Then the double war trap. No, not quite. S Triple C though, also getting out of it. Eats his way free. DDC on the chase. The core's on the run. They're low though. Still Afu with the Echo. At some point he's going to hit one, but just not yet it seems. As DDC finds the Stretch Armstrong Sackles, but instantly get cancelled out. Mookie makes it back to safety. Kaka also on the run. Heavy commitment from LFY, and they do manage to clean up Faith on the other side of the fight. Still Echo Slam ready. They do have the global now. I mean, that wasn't the worst for Newbie. Again, like, they, they lost a numerical advantage, but BKBs are starting to go relatively low now. And they are getting closer to the ultimate game plan, which to me is... If they have a chance of winning, it's hitting to level 25. Although, unfortunately, Puck has been dying every single fight. I think KP's had like six deaths in the last 15 minutes. Okay, five. But all of them have come, you know, since he got the Midas, I want right. to say. In the river, DDC getting caught out, ruptured up. Currently trying to stay alive as best he can. Hexes one, shackles the other, and will accept his fate. Whether he likes it or not, yep. he is dead. That's a nice little chili spree ended. Sadly for newbie, Roche is not up just yet. Close to the, not the max respawn, but close to the 10 minute respawn. Newbie are hoping that they can sneak a Roche. I don't think the timing's gonna work out. I feel like if SC could finish his butterfly in the next, let's say five to seven to 10 minutes, he might just take over this game in terms of physical damage output between BKB and evasion. There's very little Alpha could do right now. KP comes in, he's gonna get found, is he gonna get lasso? That's a question. He orbs to the right side and he just dies. They Tunnel were... vigiling on the fight in the mid lane. He wasn't watching his hero. Now Fissure clips on Kaka. Global comes in again late, maybe protecting. They've SC. still got a lasso though. This Batrider's not giving up this yet. Flame break pulls S Triple C closer into the clutches. Batman can't quite wrangle That's him hard. in. Now the buyback. Newbie still want to take this fight, but the BKB's up on Monet, and he stands there like a bulwark against the offense. In comes Kaka, Dragon Tail before he can burrow. He hesitates. He's getting punished for it. Now likely to go down. Super finishes him off. Just a bit slow on the trigger, and still Afu waiting for that Echo opportunity. Really doesn't need it. He still has an impact without it. The Batrider may have overplayed his hand. He's got the lasso. Can he get it off? No. Still. Newbie bring him down, and now Afu strikes. Nailing them with the echo, and then to the cross comes the fissure. He hits all three, cleans them up, and KOs newbie out of the match and out of their opportunity to take a game off of why they are still undefeated. They are still dominant. I don't remember the last time that a foreign player imported into China did so well. You know who that was? It was Chuan. Just think of what Chuan did throughout the early history of Chinese Dota. Afu is doing it right now. I suppose you could say KP. Sure, KP. is probably the closest, but, you know, he, you didn't, do he, it at, he didn't do it at TI. You can't argue against what we just saw. He's so damn good. It's been so impressive. With this win, LFY 12-0, all but assured first place in their group. Yeah. It's going to be near impossible for anyone to match what they've achieved. And who knows if they'll even drop a game. Perhaps they can go undefeated the rest of the way. We'll see if anyone can figure them out. As for Team Newbie, a loss here, 2-0, defeated. Does put them in the danger zone of potentially not making it into the upper bracket. I still think they're in okay shape because they yeah. played some of the tough teams already, but they're going to have to put those, you know, those games that they should win, they now need to win to get, ensure that top four. That's for sure. All right, guys, thank you for joining us. There's one more match coming up for myself and Luminous. TI7 action will be continuing in just a minute. Stay tuned.